Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let me show you the slides. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi fi kulli lahazatin abada ala dan ni'amillahi wa abdalihi. Allahumma atina min adunka rahmah wa alimna min adunka ilma. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alimul hakim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nawayna ta'alima wa ta'alim wa tazakura wa tazkir wa naf'a wa nindifa'a. والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله مرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية من رحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني وما شرب الصافي الهاني وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني وما شرب الصافي الهاني وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني وما شرب الصافي الهاني وهاب يا غني اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ألهمنا علما نفقه به أوامرك ونواهيك ورزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف نناجيك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن نزلك فهم النبي وحفظ المرسلين وإلهام الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغننا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرمنا بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفزه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت, وقت احتياجنا إليه يا أرحم الراحم اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك ويشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحم آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من مقاليد الأمور كلها بيده وإليه يرجع الأمر كله يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وسدد لساني وهد قلبي وفعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا ورزقنا كمال فتوح العارفين والفقه في الدين مع كمال إخذ صدق اليقين والعافية والغنى والنصر والحفظ والنفع والانتفاع وخيرة الدارين وعلم الأولين والآخرين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله بسم الله أوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم okay. uh, The last time around We finished up to Memang, memang in my English Because I made the caliphate of Hatsuna Umar anhu, But in my Arabic I'm on the on the fourth point <laughs> So uh, either I didn't move my Arabic Mark lah eh Inshallah I don't know Okay so um, Someone able to share screen For the For the Book For um, Share on the Buddhist book Bismillah ar rahman rahim خلاصة عن تاريخ الخلافة الراشدة من كتاب فقه السيرة 
للعلامة الدكتور محمد سعيد رمضان البوطي رحمه الله تعالى ونفعنا به وبعون في الدارين نعم okay. so it is um, so a summary right, on the um, the history of the خلافة الخلافة الراشدين right, or the خلافة الراشدة um, the the um, the right guy he lives or the right guy he lived um, written by Sheikh Ramadan Budi Nam okay okay so I think that means we have finished eh? we have finished the the four I mean the lessons that we have taken um, from the life of Sayyidina Abu Bakr if I'm not wrong we finished it and we are actually right now at Sayyidina Omar radiyallahu ta'ala and who is it correct or is it not correct that's <laughs> a forgot um do you finish the entire thing about Sayyidina Abu Bakr? Oh no. I don't remember. Because my English and my Arabic shows different marks. I put the marking differently on my English and on my Arabic. <laughs> I think. Oh no one. <laughs> no one to run notes. <laughs> okay lah. Inshallah. Okay. Um, I, will, I will speak lah from, from whatever uh, is being shown here. Okay, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Arabic, right? So of the lessons, eh? Lessons that we have learned from the Caliph, from the Caliphate of Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Rabi'an la ta'amalu muslim fi al-mawqif al-ladhi waqafahu Abu Bakr min al-qabail al-murtadda wal azimat al-madiyah al-lati tamadda'a بها في ما في مقاومة هذه القبائل نعم so number four right so no Muslim should basically no Muslim can um you know uh, reflect on the reflect meaning and nobody can deny or nobody can can doubt the stance taken by Sayyidina Abu Bakr towards the opposite tribes or the unyielding determination which set him apart from the other co- companions and right? meaning nobody nobody <laughs> can um can 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 doubt and what Sayyidina Abu Bakr did right? and no, nobody can can even um uh deny that what he did even though it was it was unpopular you know at a mo- at a point when he did it he still did it right because he was fully um confident that what he was doing was correct right? and this is something that is very strong in Islam that if somebody is from knowledge eh, from from eh, from knowledge they know something is co- is correct uh, in Islam, that for them to actually go ahead and do and do it, even if the majority of the people are against it, and you know that for sure the majority have uh, misunderstood, or the majority have um, that they that they they, they have misjudged uh, the situation. And so, but of course, it it requires for a person to be of a level, uh, you know, of a level of 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 understanding of Islamic law, right? So of course, here's in our Bakr, he's the best of them. Right, he's the best of them, and in the way he understood Islamic law, right, was a notch higher. In fact, not a notch higher, but very many, many notches higher than um, than what the rest of them understood. Right, so so while they saw um, that it is impermissible uh, to fight other Muslims, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he understood like right, that um, that these people have um, they have they've left the fall of Islam by them denying the compulsion of zakat. Right, so by them not wanting to give the zakat, then that has called for them to be fought, right? And so he was, even though he was the only one who held that position, right? Uh, and everybody else did not hold that position. So we say now, Omar, radiyallahu taala anhu, he still went ahead and he still understood, right? That uh, he is to, uh, he still understood, right? That he is to do what Allah subhanahu wa taala has commanded, right? So most indeed, all of whom failed in the beginning to master the same resolve. Without glimpsing the divine wisdom, right? so it is for us when we look at this, the situation of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, right, we will see the, the divine wisdom of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, uh, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has um, placed Sayyidina Abu Bakr in position um, over the companions because he will be the only one like who uh, would uh, who would be able to fulfill this task. You know, Subhanallah, to fulfill this task and to bring the Muslims and, and to prevent people from attacking Medina and also to prevent people from thereafter uh, neglecting the zakat, inshallah. Right, so it is that um, without losing the divine wisdom which placed the right man at the right time before the right task. That is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is inconceivable that any of the, right, any of the other companions 
would have been more worthy than Abu Bakr to stand in the face of that storm, then send then send it back whence it came from. Where even even Sayyidina Umar, who had was known for his sternness and unflinching resolve, fell short of the strength which was demonstrated by Sayyidina Abu Bakr in this particular occasion. Who then can see this dazzling divine wisdom at work? Uh, uh, then, uh, then blame history and those who lift it for submitting themselves to the authority of this self same wisdom. You know, subhanallah. Right. So here, um, in looking at what has happened in our Bakr's time, which is why I say in our Bakr, he is known to for the um, to be the embodiment of uh, courage. Yeah, um, to be the to be the embodiment of courage, right? Because uh, this this is what courage is. Right, courage is basically to stand up for what is correct, even if you're even if you're alone. Right, to stand up what is for is correct, even if you are alone. That is courage, and right, that nobody else standing with you, you're the only one standing. Right, that is courage. You no, know, mashallah. Um, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr did that. He demonstrated that he was the one who was fit for the job, um, the best one right, that we put in place. And we saw this, um, this, this, this uh, contribution to Sayyidina Abu Bakr. So those who come later on and say that it was not fitting for Sayyidina Abu Bakr to be in the position of, of, of being a caliph, right, at, uh, on what basis? Right, on what basis do they, do they say that? Okay, number five, based on the example of Abu Bakr and his assignment of the caliphate to Umar, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, some people may think that merely by appointing a successor, it is possible to ensure the continuation of stable government and leadership. However, this is not, now I remember that we've done this, eh? <laughs> I remember doing this. Now, however, this is not the case. Um, rather, no Muslim can be established in power until his appointment has been presented for approval to the Muslim community and this committee has declared its acceptance of its new leader. Hence, if Abu Bakr had appointed Sayyidina Umar as caliph after him, but had not obtained the approval of the Muslim community, this appointment would have been worthless. As we have mentioned above, Sayyidina Umar's appointment to the caliph, it was based on a kind of tacit shura, which was made manifest through the companion's endorsement of a person that Sayyidina Abu Bakr had chosen for them. Right, so, if anyone were to say that it was Sayyidina Abu Bakr who chose the next leader that imposed the next leader onto the Muslims, that is slander onto Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Right? He did not do that. Right? But what he did, as you we, as we have, we have shown early on, was that he took he, he took steps and he basically, it is called the Anni, right? he took calculated steps. Right? He, took, he, took, he took very, very carefully calculated steps. Um, he um, did a survey and he, it, took, it took a lot of effort, a lot of effort, a lot of time to do a survey amongst all the Muslims Right, to know uh, their sentiments, you know, on, on and, and, and really their opinion on who should be the next leader. And then after surveying, especially the most knowledgeable of the Muslims, right, he came to an understanding that it, that it was unanimous, that all of them were pointing Sayyidina Umar. So it wasn't just him, but it was all of them. And then he, um, he took a step further and he announced it um, to the people, right, so that the people will be able to speak up against it if they want to right so when when he has announced it he has not announced it as a decision that has been made right but as it, it, he announced it as a proposal right to the people right so when the people heard it and then they accepted it right then now there is a full embracing of the next leader um that will be said now umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu right so you we see this this very beautiful you know, it's not even diplomacy. You know, it's 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 beyond diplomacy. You know, it's diploma uh, to, to to be diplomatic. It's it's not it's not even this. You know, it's not even this. Diplomacy is um is is not as just you know and as a wise and as perfect as the system that Sayyidina Abu Bakr put in place. Right. So what was the system that he put in place? Basically, um, the knowledgeable, not the elites, but the knowledgeable, amongst of people in society, they are to um they they have stronger word. With regards to the next leader, and after you know looking into what the what the what the um, knowledgeable, eh, the knowledgeable, the fair, the just, right, the, the those of taqwa, you know, mashallah, all the conditions they eh, all put in, uh, what, what what they have said, right? Then he presented this to the awam, right, to the, to the general public to see their own approval as well. So no one is no one is disgruntled with the coming with, with the coming in of Sayyidina Omar into office, you know, into into in the position. You know, mashallah. So this this basically prevents, um, like for example, if uh, like, like later on when it comes to dynasties, to dynasty when it comes to dynasty, you know, um, uh, 
basically the, the, the king uh, selects his own son you know the king selects his own or the leader selects his own son to take o- take over after him without, re- without regard for anything that the knowledgeable nor the public you know feel about it, feel about it you know subhanallah and sometimes the king right um in selecting one son right neglects another son and it, it will result in warfare wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah right so we see how you know very very beautifully the Sayyidina Abu Bakr demonstrated, you know, I don't know what, 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 I don't know what's the term for this, except, you know, shura and then um, presentation. <laughs> MashaAllah, he did a shura and then he presented um, to the next, uh, to, the, to the public right, what his, you know, his suggestion was. Right, MashaAllah, so much, so much uh, humility from Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Okay, now, as we have finished that part of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, we actually in the caliphate of Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. So he says here, the caliphate of Umar bin al-Khattab, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, commander of the faithful, Umar bin al-Khattab, whom the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam granted that um, the, the, the laqab, uh, laqabahu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bil faruq. Right, he is called al-faruq, Umar al-faruq, uh, لِأَنَّهُ فَرَّقَ بَيْنَ فَرَّقَ بَيْنَ الْحَقِّ وَالْبَاطِلِ and because he um, he uh, because he uh, this would distinguish or he would separate between truth and falsehood and several times for Sayyidina Umar that he would say something to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then the next thing they know it becomes a law in Islam you know subhanallah several times you know he would say something to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and next thing it becomes a law you know mashallah one of the examples is um uh, is, is is the law is is the is the law of you know hijab onto the onto the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam meaning to keep them behind uh, screens and uh, to keep them behind physical screens. As you know, Omar mentioned to us something that maybe his wife should be kept, you know, behind closed doors and behind screens. Right? Um, uh, and at that point in time, the law had not come down. And then the very next moment, the law came. <laughs> no, mashallah. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded for the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They are not like other women. And they have to be kept behind, um, f- behind physical barriers. Um, Sayyidina Omar also, um, there was uh, during the Battle of Badr, when they had captured, when the, when the Prophet Sallallahu had captured of the disbelievers um, in the Battle of Badr, and then, and then he, he discussed Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Omar, what should they do with, uh, with, with the captives? Sayyidina Omar took it as, you know, um, uh, his opinion right, was to get rid of them, right? basically, basically to, uh, to kill them off. Um, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr was of the opinion that you know we let we let the people ransom them um, by allowing them to buy this to buy the captives or for to allow for the captives to earn their own freedom by teaching um, uh, five children among the Muslims how to read and write. Right, so that was that was basically Sayyidina Abu Bakr's idea. It sounded like Sayyidina Abu Bakr had a better idea than Sayyidina Umar. Um, and, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went with the idea of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and that's what he did, he allowed for the captives to actually um, earn their freedom right, by um, by teaching five of the Muslim children uh, reading and writing, those who were able to read and write or by ransom, right? so by, 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 by their own family members paying up you know, because it's war, it's war, I understand that it's war, eh? mashallah that's why whenever, whenever I go into all these things, you know, I hope that the people understand right, that uh, we're talking about war Right, so don't 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 impose, you know, our own ideas and our own values um, on situation because we are not in war and we don't understand also the dynamics and the laws behind warfare. Right, so basically they're in warfare. Um, but Allah thereafter, Allah, after the entire thing had finished, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed um, to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that it is not for a prophet to take ransom. Right, mashallah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed but after the entire thing the meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed uh, agreeing with Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu with regards to his um, perception you know, of what, as, to, as to what to do you know, mashallah and so mashallah it's called Al-Faruq it's called Al-Faruq for that for basically, basically for that reason that he would distinguish truth from falsehood and also that so many times um, um, the laws of Islam uh, were in line with the, with, the, with the opinion of Sayyidina Umar Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Um, so he took over the caliphate from, on, on the same day that Sayyidina Abu Bakr had passed away. During his system as caliph, Sayyidina Umar followed the same path um, of struggle and patient endurance for Allah's sake that his predecessor had pursued and Islam flourished. Right? Sayyidina, so basically Sayyidina Umar, he was in office for about 10 years. Uh, he was in office for about uh, 10 years. Um, uh, Sayyidina 
Abu Bakar was, as you mentioned, we read earlier on, I, it was slightly more than two years. Sayyidina Abu Bakar was in office. Right? Sayyidina Abu Bakar and Sayyidina Umar put together, we plant them the, the years together, becomes the, um, the, the amount of years that Sayyidina Uthman was in office. Right, that he was a caliph. So now Uthman was the longest, eh? longest in um, caliphate. So now cannot forget that Sayyidina Uthman, that the bulk of his caliphate was actually peace and, um, and in progress for the Muslims. It was only towards the end of his caliphate that, um, that there, was a, there was a huge fitna. Lah. You know, insha'Allah. Um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, Sayyidina Umar is also uh, uh, understood, he's also listed as, you know, in, in our time. Like, we shouldn't should matter to us anyway, but it was listed in our time as one of the most um, influential human beings in the, his, in the history of mankind. He's one of them, he's in the list. You know, Rasulullah is, is not number one, and then they have like, all the other stuff, um, all the other people in the list. Sayyidina Umar is one of them. If you, if you look through carefully, I can't remember what number he is, but he's one of them, one of the very influential um, human beings, right, in the history of mankind. Okay, um, he is Sayyidina Umar, he is the first to be called Amirul Mu'min uh, amongst the uh, caliphs of Rasulullah SAW, mainly because for Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he was called Khalifa to Rasulullah, meaning the one who took over Rasulullah. Right? So, correctly in, in Arabic, you would call Sayyidina Umar Khalifa to Khalifa to Rasulullah. Right, the one who took over, the one who took over the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that became uh, trouble, troublesome lah. Eh? To say that to say Khalifa tu Khalifa ti Rasulillah. Right, so then what say now Osman what Khalifa tu Khalifa ti Khalifa ti Rasulillah. You know, mashallah. I mean, it would take, it would, it would be, it would be um, troublesome right, to say that. So they, so the the, the believers actually, the, the Sahaba they came together and they began to call say now Omar Amirul Mu'minin. Right, the, the commander of the faithful, or the commander of the believers, the leader of the believers. Um, I know some books they will use the word prince, right? Because Amir does mean prince in Arabic. They will say the the prince of the believers is is uh, <laughs> it's off, right? The kind of translation is very off. Um, the commander, yeah, Amir, Amir can mean commander. The Amir can mean prince um, of the believers. Say now, Umar radiallahu taala anhu. Um, during his uh, during his term as caliph, right, he took the path of Sayyidina Abu Bakr and he and he and he continued a lot of what Sayyidina Abu Bakr had established, but um, there were things that he uh, would undo immediately uh, from what Sayyidina Abu Bakr had established. And the first thing that we see here is the first thing that he did as caliph was to remove Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid from his post. Mashallah. The first thing yeah, that he did. Uh, once he was um was was uh, he came into position, the first thing I uh, did he uh, removed Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid um from his uh, position as the general as, as the army commander. This made Sayyidina Omar very unpopular <laughs> amongst not, not not all of the Muslims but specifically the tribe of Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid. Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid is the cousin of Sayyidina Omar on his mother's side. Right, they're, actually, they're actually direct cousins. <laughs> um, and they have no issues with each other. They're, 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 they're you know, they're, they're, um, they're cousins. They're cousins, right? But, but um, and it was that, you know, it was that uh, he did this, right? Because he realized, right, that the Muslims who were attributing, um, he did this for two reasons, for two reasons. The first reason was that he realized that the Muslims were attributing the victory of the Muslims in conquest of lands to Sayyidina Khalid, right? which he didn't want to happen because it is Allah who conquered lands, not Sayyidina Khalid. And second thing was that his love for Sayyidina Khalid um, to prevent any form of, you know, um, uh, to protect his cousin from Riyadh, right? from, to protect his cousin from having any form of, you know, um, uh, a pride uh, in the self that he might think that he is the one who, um, you know, who led uh, the conquest right, for uh, uh, for the Muslims, inshallah. Right, so it is. Um, yeah, there was. I mean, there's a of the reasons why Sayyidina Omar did what he did. Right, so here he says that. Uh, so, the, so, so he was the commander of the Muslim army in Syria, and to restore Abu Ubaidah to the same to the position after witnessing the conquest of Jerusalem, Sayyidina Omar remained in the city for ten days. After which he returned to Medina, taking Khalid with him. When Khalid took him to task for the way he had treated him, Sayyidina Omar uh, replied to him, "Say, believe me, O oh Khalid, you have been most gracious towards me, and you are dear to my heart." 
And Sayyidina Khalid himself did not understand why Sayyidina Umar did what he did. Um, uh, but Sayyidina Umar, he explained to Sayyidina Khalid uh, as to, uh, you know, as, 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 as to why he took this position. So he said, Wallahi ya Khalid, innaka alayya la kareem, wa innaka ilayya la habib. Oh Khalid, for surely you are noble to me. You know, you are you are honored to me and you are beloved to me. Uh, but he explained as to why he did what he did. And Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid. Um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad uh, And the thing about it is that you know Him removing Sayyidina Khalid from position Did not affect the army in any way right? Because Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah And Sayyidina Khalid bin Wali They work together Anyway, they very they they work very well together right? So we, regardless of who was in charge you know, Who was head you know, of the army uh, um, the, Sayyidina Khalid just being in the army itself Benefited the army you know, so there was there was no there was no um <laughs> there was there was no uh, uh uh there was there was no bad um result with Sayyidina Khalid being brought down uh, from position. He was still there as an advisor to Sayyidina Abu Ubaida. As with when, when Sayyidina Abu Ubaida was was the leader of the army, Sayyidina Abu Bakr actually brought down Sayyidina Abu Ubaida and brought up Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid. Um Sayyidina Abu Bakr did that, you know, midway during the battle. That happened, you know, and, and 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 it was only between Sayyidina Khalid and Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah, you know, who was the general and who was actually, um, you know, uh, second, you know, in command, <laughs> right? So basically, it didn't make any, it didn't really make any difference except that the general has the general has a last word, right? But at the same time, they were they were working together, right? So um, they would consult each other, and usually they were on the same page. With regards to it, um, the next actions to take, right? So, mashallah, they were they were, they were very well together. So, they, it actually didn't have any detrimental effect, right, in what Sayyidina Omar did, right? But it had benefit, right, in reminding the Muslims that um, that the Muslim army would, would get victory anyway, even if Khalid was not the general of the army. Um, uh, so, to not attribute the, the 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 victory of the Muslims to one individual, but rather it is to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Naam. Um, naam. Right, so he said. So he also sent letters to various provinces and cities under the rule of Islam, saying, "I did not remove Khalid from his post due to any ill will between us or any disloyalty on his part. Rather, I took this action out of concern for those who might be negatively affected by the swiftness of his attacks and the intensity of his blows." Khalid, who was the son of Sayyidina Omar's maternal aunt, died during Sayyidina Omar's calif- uh, caliphate in the city of Homs. Um, Sayyidina Khalid, he was. Aff- afflicted with the with the disease, right? During the time of Sayyidina Umar, the Allah Taala Anhu, there was a um there was there was a plague, right? There was a plague that happened in Damascus, and many of the great Sahaba who were living in Damascus at that time, they were afflicted, right, By this plague, this plague basically would affect their skin, right? So it's, it was something that like leprosy is was similar to leprosy, so it was it spread amongst the people, eh? It was uh, it was contagious. Um, it spread amongst the people, and anyone who got it, right, they would die. They they they, they will die. Right? They will they will die a slow death, but they will die. So it was it was fatal, lah. This this disease was fatal. Sayyidina Khalid got it. Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah got it. Right. So and, and many of the big Sahaba who were in Damascus, they actually were hit, were hit by the by the plague that was going on in Damascus, uh, at that time. Sayyidina Omar, you know why he wrote this letter to to the people around, uh, was basically to prevent any suuzan. Uh, it is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to actually prevent suuzan. Uh, suuzan meaning a bad opinion. It's a sunnah. It's a sunnah. If you suspect that what you do uh, would 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 it, there's a possibility that what you do would um, trigger off a bad opinion from other people, you know, then it is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to actually counter it before it even happens. Right to actually count it before it even happens. There's a story in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, whereby he was walking with his wife Sophia, you know, and of course he's a prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He will not be doing anything that is haram, right, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, but basically he was walking with his wife Sophia, um, and from afar, right, there were some companions amongst the Ansar who saw him walking with a woman, right. So and 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 when they saw Rasulullah walking with a woman, they began they began to hasten their footsteps. You know, and began to you know whisper, and they were walking further away. So Rasulullah, you know, he suspected that there could be a 
you know, a suzon, a bad opinion that, that, that could have happened uh, with those people. So he called out to them and he said that, in the house Sophia, in the house Sophia. Uh, he said, no, she, she's Sophia, my wife. She's Sophia, my wife. I'm just, I'm not talking, I'm just walking with a random woman, just my wife. <laughs> no, inshallah. Right, so, and then they all, they stopped. Ya Rasulullah, we would not have thought bad of you. And he said, but shaitan, and but shaitan is ready to make you think the worst of people. Right, so it is a sunnah uh, of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and of the, uh, the khulafa or uh, uh, khulafa or rashidin, right, to actually um, any uh, to to actually block any form of uzun. And so therefore, we can follow this sunnah as well. Right, that if you would um, suspect that some things that you do will have will cause for people um, to have a uzun against you, right, and and Allah alam, it's possible, it's possible, you know that 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 um. I remember there was one time I was at the masjid and then my father was there. Uh, if you ever see my father, you will not think that he's my father. Um, so basically, you know, I went, I saw, I was at Majah Halid lah, Majah Halid, and, then, and then I saw my father walk in, you know, um, I think it was in the area, couple. And then he saw me and I saw him. So I went up to him and I said, my father, lah, it's my father. You know, and then, and then I saw that some of, uh, one of the ustad was like, was, was, saw me, um, you know, salam my father. I said, I, I actually at that point in time, I didn't have to, but I just did it. I did it and I just said, that, uh, this man is my father. Right. And then they were, they, were, they were surprised like, Because if you see my father you would Unless you know You will not think that this, this is my father <laughs> You look very different um, yeah, like, but, but it is it is to say right, to say. Of course of course, you say, like, of course you know you, you, I would think that you know Saza would, would go and salam a random man right? I mean the most you would think Maybe it's a father-in-law like, eh, Maybe it looks so different Or you know you think you think something, right? You think something, you know that I'm sure I'm sure there's a mahram somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure, you know I'm sure she would not touch the hand of, of a random man, <laughs> you know, inshallah, right? Um, but it is still it is still a sunnah right, to actually um, say something, you know that that uh just so just just to help people uh, maintain a good opinion. Right? It's a sunnah to help people maintain a good opinion. If you um if if you saw it coming lah, if you could if you could see that it that that, that, that they could have. They could have have a better opinion of of you in that situation. There was there was a time whereby Rasulullah himself did not suspect. He didn't expect there to be a better opinion to be spread around. And we went through the story before in the uh, battle of Hunain. And in the battle of Hunain, at 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 Pa if right, there was a suuzon, right, there was a better opinion. There was there was going around. It was being whispered amongst the Ansar, the people of Medina, as to why Rasulullah Sallam was giving the new Muslims a lot of wealth from the battle. Right, and they saw it as favoritism. They saw it as him living people of Mecca. He saw it. They they saw it as him um, favoring the Meccans, and he was going to stay in Mecca. Right, so there was a lot of suzon. There was a, in a bad opinion. It, it, it began with the with the hypocrites. Rasulullah SAW did not see it coming, and right, which is why it spread until it reached his ears. Then he heard that this this you know this suzon or this bad opinion was going around among the Sahaba. Amongst the, the the Ansar, right, and then he stepped forward to stop it, and that again find a sunnah of to to do that. Like right? when people have when people have bad opinions being spread all around, right? and it was affecting people, then it's a sunnah to step forward and um to 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 block it, right, to explain yourself, even though he had no he had no obligation to explain himself. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there was no, there was absolutely no obligation. For him to explain his actions, right? Because he's the prophet, he's the leader. He can do whatever he wants. You know, he is the prophet and the leader. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa taala. They have no right to think the worst of him. So, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But again, he is humble. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he explained himself, right, to his people, and he helped them maintain a good opinion of him. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even though it was wajib, was compulsory on them to maintain a good opinion of, of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, especially. And 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 wajib to maintain a good opinion of every Muslim, um, uh, he 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 helped them, you know, with that. So, so you see, Sayyidina Omar here doing this. He actually sent a letter to all the generals, right, about Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid, um, and also, you know, to 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 to, to stop any suuzon against Sayyidina Omar, and to stop any suuzon against Sayyidina Khalid. Right, because it could be that you know some people they have something against you know Omar. They think, oh, see, he came into 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 power. He came in, he became a, a caliph. Should no way he bring down his own cousin? Jealous, you know. Like, and some of them might say that you know you're so jealous. So Uzan, so Uzan, so you know Omar. You know why was you know Omar be be that petty? 
he won't be that petty. You know, so, 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 so maybe some people who are against Sayyidina Umar, right, they, w- they would think that, and they would think that, and they would, um, you know, uh, uh, have a suuzon against Sayyidina Umar. Or some people knowing Sayyidina Umar is, is above that, he's not as petty as that to, to bring down someone just because they don't like him, you know, or to bring down someone just because, you know, um, you know you're jealous of him. But it, it, all of the actions is, is motivated by them wanting to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, the actions are purely motivated for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing for herself. So someone might, might think, oh, you know, if, if he brought down Khalid, right, it could, it, it is pro- probably Khalid did something, you know. Right, probably Khalid did something, had some disloyalty or he did something wrong. And that, and that, and, and Sayyidina Omar punished him by bringing him down from his position. So then they could have a soul zone against Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid. <laughs> and that's, you can see how that happened. Eh? It can possibly happen because people can't, can't make sense of why did he do what he did? Why, why did he do what he do? You know, like, why, why, why was this then? Right, so they could put a blame on Sayyidina Omar, they could put a blame on Sayyidina Khalid, but there was no blame on, on, on either of what, on either of them. Sayyidina Omar, he made it clear. It is not because of anything, um, you know, uh, of of anything that that uh, that I feel against him. So there's no ill will between us, and there is no disloyalty on his part. Right? I mean, he didn't do anything wrong. Right? It's not. This is not a punishment. It's not a punishment right, against him. Right? But rather, right, it is because you know of the swiftness, you know, of him, um, of him going through. Uh, right. right. So basically, he uh, is because of you know of of um how quickly. Uh, he will go through the land, you know, and also maybe the 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 the, the hardness of Sayyidina Khalid or whatsoever. But it was also said that it was because of um him not wanting for the Muslims to attribute um conquest Sayyidina Khalid alone, um and also to protect his own cousin from having any form of um uh from 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 from, from having any form of uh, uh ria or, or or pride, right, with regards to his very quick conquest. The Muslims were celebrating Sayyidina Khalid. And they were they were very proud of Sayyidina Khalid, mashallah. So Sayyidina Omar, he was very sensitive to these kind of things, and he stopped it, mashallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So Damascus was conquered, uh, in part by force, in part through peace treaty. Both Homs and uh, Ba'alabak were conquered peacefully, while Balbasra and uh, and and Abula were conquered by force. All of these conquests took in the place of the fourteenth year after Hijra. In the same year, Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, right, he gathered the Muslims for tarawih prayers consisting of 20 cycles of prayer. This was then, this, this was actually um, initiated by who? Initiated by Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Allah, um, okay, what does it mean by, by some of it was conquered by force, some, was, some of it was conquered through peace treaty? Basically, whenever the Muslims come to a land, this is to understand, eh? Whenever Muslims come to a land, um, they would the first thing they would seek is to make a peace treaty. That's the first thing they would seek, right? To make a peace treaty with the people of the land. Right? And when they make a peace treaty, it would mean this would mean that the Muslims have conquered that <laughs> land, right? Um, they would they would allow for people. Muslims never force anyone to come into Islam. Right? They would allow for people to maintain their their religion. No one's forced into coming into coming into Islam, right? But the governance would be the Muslim government. And that would be to establish, um, that would be to establish justice, you know, and peace through the land, and to allow for people to choose to come into Islam, right? However, if they come to a, so 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 usually so the the, the, the the what the Muslims of the land would pay zakat to the Muslim government, you know, for the for the management of the land, um, the non-Muslims would pay a tax. Right, and the tax is usually much lower than the zakat. The zakat is higher than the tax. Right, so, so technically, the Muslims were paying more than the non-Muslims of the land with regards to um, the tax, lah, tax of the land. Tax basically is for the betterment of society. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right, so however, if they come to to cities in 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 Sham, whereby there was resistance and they refused to. 
uh, submit to the Muslims, right, then it will be taken by force. So usually by force, it, 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 it involves, um, it involves, Allahumma uh, sari'ana sayyidina Muhammad. I forgot the English word. Siege. They will lay siege. <laughs> they will lay siege on the on on the town in in the, in that way, right? Um, and then in other times they will actually the people of the town will actually go out and fight the Muslims, and then it will, and the Muslims will will, will win very quickly, <laughs> and then um conquer the land and then uh, uh place a uh a, a law and order, right, over the land until the, until the, the all, all of Sham was conquered by the Muslims in the in the time of Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu taala anhu, you know. And okay, Sayyidina Omar gathered the Muslims together for Taraweeh uh, prayers right, in that year itself. Sayyidina Omar. So the 20 rakaats of Taraweeh, right, it is a sunnah that is established by Sayyidina Omar. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, mentioned right, to hold on to his sunnah and the sunnah of the Khulafa or Rashidin after him. So the sunnah of the Khulafa or Rashidin, they are the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so nobody can separate from the sunnah of the Khulafa or Rashidin uh, of the Radical uh, Kilis and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in fact, Taraweeh is 20 rakats. Taraweeh, it is understood from the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu that it is 20 rakats. Right. Um, the reason why in the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, Alaihi it was not done twenty rakats in uh, you know in 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 jama'ah, it was because he was fearful that it would become difficult on the Muslims. Right, but he knew that of the caliphs there will be those who will do it. Right? so if the caliph instituted it, it won't be Sharia. It is not it's not possible for it to be Sharia in a sense. It's not possible for it to be wajib on people. Right, so he was afraid. He didn't. He stopped doing it Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because. He was afraid that it would be made wajib on people and people cannot handle it. Right? So but but it's from his mercy on his Ummah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Masayna Umar in his time he saw the people praying in the masjid separately here and there in different 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 places of the masjid and praying through the night. And so he said to himself, you know, why not bring everyone together and then pray together you know, under one jama'ah? You know, under one imam, that will make more. I mean, that, that that will be more beneficial in doing it that way. So he brought the people together, you know, and then we began praying together from there. Sayyidina Umar al um, After Sayyidina Umar, it was continued by Sayyidina Uthman, it was continued by Sayyidina Ali. It was continued, this 20 rakaats, eh? 20 rakaats was continued in every generation up to our time, right? This 20 rakaats. Um, Taraweeh is 20 rakaats, <laughs> mashallah. Um, they will not count. Um, eight rakaats to be taraweeh. Eight rakaats is called night prayer. It's just night prayer. Right, but taraweeh itself is 20. Right, it's 20. <laughs> right, if you pay two rakaats, you pay four rakaats, up to you sunnah anyway. Right, um, no one can see you're wrong. Right, but it's called night prayer. It's called night prayer. <laughs> right, taraweeh is specifically 20 rakaats. Mashallah. Um, and it was once after, during the time of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he came to the masjid and he saw the people all, you know, all in saf, um, in, in rows, uh, preparing for the taraweeh prayers, and the masjid were all, was lit up, you know, with so many people coming to pray taraweeh. Sayyidina Ali, he said, oh, Omar, you know, Sayyidina Omar was had passed away at the time, because Sayyidina Ali's time, eh, said, may Allah, uh, may Allah lighten, or may Allah illuminate the grave of Omar, just as how he has illuminated our mosques, uh, with Taraweeh in Ramadan, inshallah. That is from Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Okay, so this sunnah is called sunnah mustambitah. Right? Sunnah mustambitah basically is a derived sunnah. Um, that, that he saw Rasulullah doing it right, one or two or three times in, in Ramadan. Then he discontinued it out of fear of it of of, of it being made, being made wajib, right? So it is called sunnah mustambiqah. Right? Some scholars will say it's not even called it's not even called a good bid'ah. It's not even called a good bid'ah, but it's basically a derived sunnah. It's a sunnah. Right? It's a derived sunnah. It's not even, it's not even a good bid'ah. It is a derived sunnah. Right? So in the mashallah, um, uh, up till today, right, when we pray for twenty rakats taraweeh in Ramadan. Um, the reward goes by Sayyidina Umar that he has encouraged this, inshallah. Um, Allahumma salli Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, it, should be a, it, should, it should be an effort put in 
then Ramadan comes around, uh, it's only 30 days, you know, mashallah. And as women, you know, we take some days where we can't pray. So, you know, every day in Ramadan matters. You know, every day and every night in Ramadan matters. So, you know, if you really, really push it, lah, try and push it. You know, push it to do 20 rakaans every single day. Right? It is unheard of from a time of Sayyidina Umar, eh? It is unheard of for Muslims to not pray 20 raka'ats per night in Ramadan. It was unheard of. MashaAllah. <laughs> in our time, it's like half the jama'ah will do 8 and half will do 20. Of course, it's not, it's not, it's not a blame because it's not wajib. It's a sunnah. Right? But again, you know, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the encouragement, with the encouragement to do it. You know, it was said that in the time of Allah Muhammad, can't remember, but it wasn't the time of the Khulafa or Rashidin. It was after that that they heard that the people in Mecca when they pray tarawih in the past time, the past is in the past, when they pray tarawih every four rakaats they pray for. So basically, tarawih is called tarawih because you're supposed to do long standings. <laughs> basically, you're supposed to spend the night in prayer. So these people, right? What they would do is that they would in Mecca, right? In the, in, in the past, lah. They would they would pray four rakats of the of 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 the rawiyah. then they would tawaf the Kaaba seven times, <laughs> then they pray four more rakats, then tawaf, then four more rakats, and then tawaf. You know, and they would keep doing this, and then they finish doing the rakats of the rawiyah. This is how they would do it. It would take them hours, right, to do it. You know, so people in Medina had. <laughs> What people in Mecca were doing, you know, that they 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 they, they do four rakats, they tawaf seven rounds, four rakats, they tawaf seven rounds. Mashallah, the, the ibadah is a different level altogether, lah. Mashallah. So people in Medina, they 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 heard about this, and they they pula, you know, and, um, they got, <laughs> they had they had you say ghippa, ghippa meaning like they, they 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 had a jealousy that they they also want, you know, to to, to do that, but they have no kaaba to go around. <laughs> Right, so so what they did was that they would pray for rakaats, for long rakaats, then they would play, they would pray for short rakaats, then they would pray for long rakaats, then they would pray for short rakaats. The four short rakaats in between were not also counted as taraweh, but extra sunnah prayers. <laughs> so they were they were doing this, you know, just just to to compete with people of Mecca. Subhanallah. Um, that was how they, so how people in the past they they, they they would really pray through the night of Ramadan. Um, and they will walk in the in the day. Eh? They will go out and they will walk in the day. Right? It's not that they will they will now in our time. Yes, they sleep they sleep in the day until zohor. Then they get up. But in the past, they used they will wake up early in the morning because they are farmers. Right? They have to work. Right? Otherwise, they won't eat. No, Subhanallah. Okay. Uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allah. Um. Naam. Okay. Uh. So. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Okay. Naam. Right, so Allah Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu he gathered his uh, the people for the, for the tarawih prayers 20, 20 rakats in cycles that was one of the contributions of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the year 15 of the Hijra all of Jordan was conquered by force except for uh, Tiberias which was conquered peacefully it was in the same year the battle of Yarmouk and Qadisiyah also took place Ibn Jarir states in his history that it was at this time that Sa'ad uh, bin Abi Waqqas found the city, the city of Kufa in Iraq. In addition, Sayyidina Umar established regular salaries for those who are uh, in his employment. Um, he set up an official government apparatus and uh, uh, responsible for the army and fighters' wages. And he distributed war, sp- uh, war spells amongst those entitled to them, giving priority to those who have been Muslim longer for a longer time. So basically, you see Sayyidina Umar, he established a government. You know, mashallah. And and this is all basically what people might call today, all that he did is all bid'ah. <laughs> it's all bid'ah because it's all new. Right? He put wages, he put salary, he put you know and um uh he would he would entitle those who you know who were Muslim longer to have more spots of war. I mean basically it's all it's all it's all might call this all you know bid'ah or and, and then they would might call it a good bid'ah. But it's all not bid'ah, it's all called um uh, it's all called uh, uh, basically, it's called common sense. <laughs> right? I mean, so you can you can say sunnah, mashallah, but it's common sense. Right? It's common sense. And Omar he realized that um, you, if you if you're gonna have if you're gonna have a lot of jihad going on, 
then you better put in a system of payment right for these people because they have to feed their families right so he put a system of payment right for the for the generals he put a system of payment for the while while he himself will not take any payment <laughs> himself um but he ensured that his people will be will, will, will paid and they will paid well you know subhanallah because they have to feed their families inshallah right so in the in the um in the year season of the hijra al ahwas and al madain were conquered and it was there that sa'ad led the prayer in the palace of Kisro, and it was the first uh, Jama'ah prayer to be prayed in Iraq, right? And then he consulted the companions of Sayyidina Ali concerning whether he should go out himself to fight against the Persian, the Byzantines, and Sayyidina Ali, he replied um, uh, that he, Sayyidina Ali he was against it. Eh? He replied Sayyidina Umar should not go out and fight against the Byzantines um, Sayyidina, because Sayyidina Umar, he is the, he is the, the caliph. And it's how Sayyidina Umar himself uh, would be against Sayyidina Abu Bakr going out to fight right, against um, the armies. Sayyidina Ali himself would would advise Sayyidina Umar. Sayyidina Ali was a constant advisor right, for Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu ta'ala and who um, now let me just I want to read my notes. I'm, I'm in a very dimly lit room so I'm trying to see my own notes. Allahumma salli wa salli wa barri alayhi wa ala alihi wa fi fathi al-damaj kana abu ba'ida wa ala alihi wa ala alihi wa ala alihi wa ala alihi on how Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah eventually um, conquered Damascus. Uh, Damascus was the it was it was it was a long and hard war. Right, for them to actually conquer Damascus. And because uh, winter came in as well. Right. So winter came in um, with against the Muslims at uh, Damascus. Damascus will have snow, eh? When I was in Damascus it used to snow and used to heal. It will get the it the, the weather will get very harsh um, during the winter. Uh, so um, it was that, uh, and it was that 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 um, the Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid, right? It was one of his um, war strategies, right? By which they employed, right? And um, they actually conquered Damascus, right? So it was um, that they they actually went through. There was a particular place where they, they they found they went through and they, they, they conquered Damascus. Inshallah. Maybe I just wrote down all these things, all these things, but it's out of my book lah. Let's see what there was the story behind that. But Damascus was a uh, was one of the dif- one of the um, more difficult <laughs> parts of Syria by which they uh, conquered. Sayyidina Omar eventually when they con- when they conquered Al Quds when they conquered um, uh, Palestine, uh, Palestine uh, Sayyidina Omar would go up uh, to Palestine uh, to, 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 to 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 basically to um, what do you say eh? to to conquer it was conquered already uh, but he would go there to visit. Right, uh, Palestine because of the position of Palestine in because of the position of Palestine in Islam. Mm-hmm. So he would go up to Palestine and he, but he refused to pray in the um in the churches right, in, in, in the Qudus right, in Palestine um because he was afraid that if he prayed in their churches right, that the people would make the church a place of worship for the Muslims. I, and that they would, and this would deny the Christians of their place of worship. So he was, he was so sensitive to that point, I, whereby he would not do that because if he prayed there, then then the the Muslims might take over the church, saying that the Amirul Mu'minin prayed there, I, and then that would deny the um the, the Muslims, it would deny the, the Christians of using the church for worship. Allahumma sallallahu alaihi Okay, Alhamdulillah. Um, it does get more and more technical, lah, because you're going through the, the history of um, Sayyidina Omar. Sayyidina Omar, a lot of it, it does go into a lot of conquest. Um, you know, land after land, uh, which eventually we will see the, you will see the, um, it will end basically with the murder of Sayyidina Omar, radiyallahu ta'ala, and who, yeah. So, so basically, the whole, the entire story will be, will be, will be, will be conquest after conquest until the murder of Sayyidina Omar. And then Sayyidina Osman coming into position. Okay, okay so insha'Allah we will start there for today. Um, 
Any questions? Are there any questions? So as I mentioned earlier on, right, that this um, it is best that people fo- they, they they follow the previous Sira lessons, right, before coming into or while while you're going through this history of um of the of the rightly guided caliphs, I had to go to the Sira. There has there has been gone through from earlier on. Allahumma salli wa salli wa bari alayhi wa ala alihi. Okay. Um, there's, there's no if there's no questions we will do dua after Maulid, inshallah. Mm. The statement of Sayyidina Ali next week inshallah will take. Inshallah. So do dua after after Maulid. Mm.